Bullying by Emily Clements, Megan Necessary, and Grace Hahn. Bullying is an educational issue in schools, and it happens every day. Bullying in schools is not just a problem in our country, it's an international issue. Bullying happens at all schools and at all grade levels. Bullying usually occurs at school when there is no adult around. Bullying is usually not reported by the bully or the victim because the bully doesn't want to get in trouble and the victim wants to avoid making the bully angry. Bullying used to be considered normal and that it was just a part of growing up. People thought it had no long-term impact on kids and that victims should just fight back against bullies. Research on bullying began in the late 1970s and through the 1980s. A Norwegian psychologist named Dan Olwius started the research after several adolescent boys committed suicide and had been victims of bullying in Norway. More studies continued in the 1990s, and researchers found that bullying is a serious problem involving aggression and that it does have lasting effects on people. Teachers play a big role when it comes to bullying. Most teachers think that bullying affects students socially and also causes lower academic achievement. Teachers also believe that bullying should be addressed in school and that they should educate the students and their parents about the effects of bullying. Parents also play a big role in bullying, whether their kid is the victim or the bully. Parents believe they need to advocate for and support their children and teachers in their fight against bullying. Parents believe they should be role models for their children and be able to identify when their children are at risk of being bullied or are the bully. Bullying has many negative effects, not just for the bullied, but also for the bully. Children who are bullied experience many symptoms related to depression, such as feeling sad or lonely, and different sleeping patterns and appetite. In general, these students can have problems with their mental health such as anxiety or stress-related disorders. They may also not be interested in their normal activities and will want to avoid going to school in order to avoid the bullying. Okay. Victims of bullying may even commit or consider suicide. They are two to nine times more likely to consider taking their lives than non-victims. Bullies are more likely to do drugs and drink alcohol in adolescence and even into adulthood. They may break the law more frequently and can even be abusive to romantic partners. They're also more likely to fight other students or quit school. When bullies are caught, they can be punished by the school in various ways such as suspension or putting them off sports teams. Some bullies break sexual harassment and discrimination laws and can even get into serious trouble. With technology on the rise, a new type of bullying has surfaced in recent years, cyberbullying. This type of bullying uses technology to harm the victim. This can be done through messaging, texting, emails, and other forms of communicating through the internet. Some cyberbullying does not happen over messaging. It can also include creating a fake account to harass or impersonate someone. Also, it can include posting unwanted photos or information about a person. Cyberbullying can happen at any time of day due to the growing amount of access children have to the internet, primarily through their cell phones. Also, children have been accessing the internet at younger ages to play games or talk to friends. Cyberbullying is sometimes accidental due to the difficulty of detecting tone and text messages, but in cases where there have been multiple harmful messages, it is usually seen as bullying. The problem with cyberbullying is that due to the anonymous nature of the internet, it is often hard to pinpoint who is saying what. This allows cyberbullies to get away with bullying their classmates. However, it's been proven that bullying outside of the internet and cyberbullying often happen together. Although bullying has many side effects to the victim, it helps the bully feel better. Bullies bully in order to help their self-esteem. In a study in the UK, bullies and non-bullies filled out a questionnaire on the behavior and the reasons behind it. The results will most likely apply to the children in the US because of the commonalities between the two countries. It was found that bullies are inclined to have a negative perception of themselves. This suggests that bullying is a coping mechanism to improve their self-worth. There was a common theme that resulted from the study. Bullies were more likely to come from a non-traditional family than non-bullies. 
More specifically, they usually did not live with both biological parents. They were also at a higher risk for alcohol and substance abuse promoted by easy access to it in their lives. Mental health problems such as depression, anxiety, and hostility are a higher risk for bullies. High hostility is correlated with not being academically strong, not being athletic, not having certain possessions, or being perceived as homosexual. This implies that envy can be a motivation for bullies. Other motivations for bullies appear to be admiration, status, dominance, and surprisingly, affection from the bystanders. Although the issue of bullying has been prevalent in the media, it appears there has been a decline in bullying in schools in the recent years in the United States. The anti-bullying campaign in schools appear to help. Face-to-face -face bullying appears to be going down, but more evidence needs to be done on the prevalence of the newest type of bullying, cyberbullying. Cyberbullying has only recently been on questionnaires. The trends starting from around 2006 to 2007 show that bullying is still on a consistent decline, but not as dramatic. Starting from the 2000s, harassment over internet has been on the rise, but bullying overall has been on a general decline since the 1990s. One study showed that females are showing fewer declines than males, but overall the gender difference is non-existent when considering other factors. Reports show bullying is going towards a, a decline in most countries internationally. In a recent survey taken in Ontario, the females seem to bully more than the males. This appears to be because girls verbally bully more, so cyberbullying is more their style. On the other hand, males use more physical violence, which has been on the decline. Although bullying is on decline, it is still happening at incredibly high rates. Overall, bullying in recent years is declining, but there is no guarantee for the future. As future educators, we hope to make an impact on the issue in schools. We can help by educating students about the effects of bullying. We worry that bullying can get worse because of the rise in technology. Through awareness and effort, we hope that the trend of bullying continues to decline.